Our next speaker is Dr. Simmer Singh, MD, PhD, internal medicine resident at University of Arizona College of Medicine and a member of my research team. He'll be speaking on epidemiology of cardiac amyloidosis in veterans. Um, thank you, Dr. Dave. So um, take a little time to uh, talk about some of the research we're doing on cardiac amyloidosis. And then I want to talk a little bit about my, uh, my journey into data science and um, how it's been navigating uh, uh, that foray. So, so you know, cardiac amyloidosis is actually a pretty rare disease. And getting accurate data on cardiac amyloidosis is some, somewhat hard. Um, it's uh, cardiomyopathy, and um, oftentimes uh, symptoms are actually quite nonspecific. And this makes diagnosis quite difficult. Um, and the median time in diagnosis is actually um, 39 months. And oftentimes, patients wait years before a diagnosis. Uh, this can be nerve wracking not only for the patients, but very difficult for the healthcare system, which is caring for them. And um, it's unknown, actually, the, the prevalence and incidence of cardiac amyloidosis in the, in the veteran population. So that's something we sought to address. Um, so number one, you know, we wanted to really identify what the burden of cardiac amyloidosis was in the, uh, in the uh, veteran population and guide the development of screening programs that would help benefit those patients. And along the way, you know, identify a cohort of patients that we can use for training, you know, AI models. Um, and also looking at other clinical outcomes. And so the way we approached this was to conduct a retrospective cohort study uh, using the VA data and the MD cloned uh, Adams platform. And we surveyed all uh, VA patients with um, an inpatient or outpatient counter in uh, 2012 and 2021. And then we used MD clone to actually create our case definition. And this is something that went through a, a rigorous uh, iterative process where, you know, we would initially def create a definition of cardiac amyloidosis. And then doing a uh, chart survey, actually go in and validate those, those findings. And through this process, you know, we actually found that traditional case definitions um, relying on ICD codes were actually not very um, informative. In fact, we, uh, we lost, uh, I think, a lot of patients uh, or misclassified a lot of patients. Um, so this was a nice iterative process, which was kind of um, uh, um, very quick, actually. And then we were able to take that data and provide some uh, statistical analyses and take a look at, in fact, uh, geographic variation, which we'll, we'll take a look at right now. So. The first thing I want to point out here is that we've, you know, essentially assembled the largest ca cardiac amyloidosis cohort in the world. And not only that, we think it's the most accurate um, uh, cohort. And so right off the bat, we have data from 2012 and 2021, which shows that we have an increase in incidence. And this is likely to be a, a, um, an increase in detection. So now that more people are looking for cardiac amyloidosis, um, we expect that um, we should pick up more cases. Interestingly, that um, it's, um, you know, cardiac amyloidosis is actually a, a disease that has a higher prevalence in people of African descent. And when we look at the geographic variation, you know, the, the data doesn't really um, show that we're detecting um, cardiac amyloidosis in places where we expect a higher prevalence. And so that was one of the insights that we really found that, you know, we have areas in which in this country where we need to do a little bit better job of, of identifying these patients and get them the care that they deserve. Um, so in, in total, we identified 5,200 patients, which, which I think would be the largest cohort um, that we can use for uh, training uh, um, and uh, further analyses. And so we were able to, you know, kind of take a look at the geographic variation here on a state level. And we see that the incidence is higher up in the Northeast. And that, this is possibly due to those, 
the fact that there's more cardiologists up there. But uh, also, they just may be better at detecting cardiac amyloidosis. Whereas in the South, you know, where you'd expect, um, given the higher proportion of, of patients with uh, African descent, you would expect more um, to pick up more cases. Uh, prevalence kind of echoes the same, same findings. And so this is just uh, kind of talking about what we, what we discussed here. Um, so I'll just skip that. Um, what, uh, so what we can take from this is that there is a significant regional variation in the incidence and prevalence of cardiac amyloidosis. Um, and this may be a difference in the detection rate, the ability of um, these separate uh, VA health systems to, to, to find cardiac amyloidosis cases. And so this is something that we'd like to, to use to develop better screening uh, programs for, for uh, at-risk populations. So with that being said, I'd like to switch over to kind of talking about the user experience, how to kind of get involved in this sort of research. Um, so for me, this is kind of a, a new um, I, a type of research. So I've always been a, a, a traditional bench scientist, a basic scientist. Um, and then specifically, you know, I looked at epigenomics, metabolomics, and kind of integrating those type of data sets. Um, then I got to residency and found I didn't have too much time to, to take, uh, take part in actual bench work. So, you know, I looked for different ways of, of engaging in research. And what I, what I did have a lot of time in, um, to do was interact with CPRS uh, in the course of my clinical duties. So I have my continuity clinic at the VA, where it's you know, been an honor to take care of veterans. And my attending on my first day told me, you know, she goes back 10 years of imaging and data so the first thing we do is we, we look at our chart. We open it up so it has 2,000, the last 2,000 notes. I mean, that's, that's an incredible amount of data to kind of sift through. Um, so I, I realized very early on the potential of this sort of, uh, this sort of data. It's, it's, it's a gold mine, as you know, many people have said before. And you know, I, saw, I wanted to start exploring some research questions. So you know, I tried doing that myself at first. And I found this um, very difficult, honestly. Um, a lot of the uh, challenges and questions we've seen uh, brought up today, have, you know, I, I also uh, encountered those. And I'm someone with, well, I consider myself literate. I've ha I have three postgraduate degrees, and I still had a tremendous time trying to, trying to navigate this. And not only that, as someone who, you know, traditionally is not at the VA every day, you know, I found it difficult to, um, to to kind of do hypothesis testing where I'd have to uh, email my query um, using a VA email. And then, you know, I have to try to log on somewhere. I had a, a card reader and uh, it, was, it was very difficult. Um, and then, you know, not being there during business hours all the time, that was also another kind of uh, a setback there. Um, so it really um, wasn't until I was uh, introduced to Dr. Dave and Dr. Agarwal, and I was able to join their data science team and kind of collaborate with them, and they kind of championed my, um, uh, I guess, entrance and uh, credentialing process. Um, that really the breakthroughs, I, I think, started to occur. So, you know, that, well, we'll talk a little bit about what my advice for, for future researchers is, but I really think that, you know, finding someone who can really get you involved, um, who has a knowledge of the process, um, because it, you know it is still a difficult process to navigate, and really when I was introduced to MD Clone, I was surprised at how quickly we could go from um, a, a question or an idea um, to having some preliminary data. I mean, this is really the power I, I, I was, um, uh, I was taken aback by, honestly. And what it really allowed us to do was to work collaboratively, you know, generate data, look at it, and then keep refining that process very quickly. This was a process that may, I don't, I don't think would have been possible if we'd gone through the traditional route of you know, emailing a, um, a query, getting a, uh, a feasibility study done. Um, it really was almost instantaneous. And what it's allowed us to do is actually accurately phenotype these patients. You know, for cardiac amyloidosis, there's a lot of noise in the diagnostic um, 
in the charts and the, the diagnoses. So it's really allowed us to accurately phenotype those patients. And we've, you know, created the largest study cohort for cardiac amyloidosis, which I think is no small measure. Um, I think it's something that I'm really excited to, to do a lot, lot uh, more with. Mm. And as someone who's, um, you know, enjoyed being a part of impactful research for quite a while, I, I feel like this is really a high value, high impact research. We're working with um, patient data, we're working with, you know, veterans, which I think makes it all the more, uh, you know, important. And it's actually not too difficult to learn, use, and teach. And, you know, in the short time I've been able to work with, um, with this data team, um, we've, had, we've been able to generate several abstracts, presentations, we've got two manuscripts in, in, um, in preparation, and I hope many more. And we've really become part of a data science team, and it's been the ability to draw on all their different expertise um, that has really made this uh, an exceptional um, experience. And we really hope that it's gonna really take care of patients, really improve the way that we, we care for them. Um, so advice for our future researchers. First of all, it's a great opportunity. I don't think that there's a more rich and um, uh, more rich and accessible data set um, than this. Huh? And so I would really think of trying to find a PI that can really support you that can get you involved um, and help uh, get you credentialed, honestly. And that includes getting a VA laptop. Honestly, if you can get yourself a VA laptop, that's gonna make, um, streamline the entire process. And, you know, tr start this credentialing process early, as you, as you heard, it does take some time. And then get hands-on with the data, start practicing, um, start building queries and MD clone. I think this is really the way to, to, to get to get involved. And I think I just want to thank the uh, Southern Arizona VA Health System, uh, Dr. Dave, Dr. Agarwal, and our entire data science team, and thank you for listening. Thanks. Thanks.